These are my tools for making great PS2 tutorials. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to showcase how to run MAME, the emulator, and some MAME ROMs on your modded PS2, fat or slim. I will caution you that this really isn't the best solution if you're interested in MAME gaming on your PS2. Um, a lot of the older MAME games, like 1980s and older games, those work fine. But a lot of the games, like especially the newer MAME games, they don't run that well or they just flat out don't run at all. So when I was on Google, I found this real nice link that basically has an ISO of 174 MAME ROMs that's been tested and do work. Some games work better than others. But quite honestly, if you're looking for a better MAME solution, I think you're better off looking somewhere else like an original Xbox or maybe a PS3 or maybe just old school MAME emulation on your PC. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the PS2 version real quick here. So if you want to follow along, there's a link in the video description. You can download this RAR file. I'm going to extract it to my desktop here in its own folder. And I'll show you real quick if you want to modify the ISO to uh, add your own games here. Um, there is a nice text file here. It talks about some of the background details behind this um, emulator and how to run the games. And I will talk about that a little bit later in this video tutorial. But here's the basic instructions in terms of how you navigate the interface once you have it loaded on your PS2. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. So here's the ISO. Basically what you wanna do, if we assume we're gonna take it as is, not change anything, um, I'm going to use a USB method. So on my PS2, I am running OPL, Open PS2 Loader. And if I go to my thumb drive here, it's already format as FAT32. I'm going to make a new folder, call that CD. And then inside this folder, we're just going to copy and paste that ISO image to there. And then after that, just go into your PS2, plug it in into a USB port, run OPL. It should navigate and see your USB thumb drive, and you can load the ISO basically. If you want to put on your internal hard drive for a fat PS2 or you want to do it through the Samba Shear or on your PC, by all means, you can also do that as well. So that's the real easy, simple version. Download the ISO and load it however you want to load it on your PS2. But let's say hypothetically you want to test some games. You want to modify the ISO. How does that work? So basically the way I know how to do it is you need a program called Ultra ISO and that allows you to modify the ISO file pretty easily. And if you have your own favorite um, ISO editing kind of program, by all means, go ahead and use it as well. So if I right click the ISO, go to open with ultra ISO, we're gonna see something that looks like this. So here's the contents of the ISO basically. The thing that's most important is if you wanna add your own ROMs, uh, what you wanna do is basically you can drag and drop the, the games which are zip files into this ROMs folder. Or you could just double click into the ROMs folder, just drag and drop it from your desktop, whatnot, into this window here. Um, one thing I do wanna note is all the games here, they gotta be a .zip file, okay? And you have to be eight characters or less. So that's one part of it. Um, getting your ROMs, wherever you're gonna get it, and just put it into the ROMs folder. And then go back to the root here, there's something called a gameslist.txt. So if you want to modify this, let me just left click and drag this out. So the games list.txt, how this works is um, all the games that are in the ROMs folder, you want to be the exact same name, exact same listing inside this text file, um, eight characters or less, and get rid of the .zip extension. And then what you want to do is save the file. So let's say hypothetically I had a game called, I don't know, ZZZ for example. So I go file, save, okay. Go back to ultra ISO. I can left click the game list.txt, delete it, add this game list program back into the ISO like here, okay. If you wanna verify that it's working, you can right click and say view. And we see that this is the ZZZ, right? And then in the ROMs folder, let's say hypothetically, I had a game called ZZZ. So I'm gonna just drag this out right here real quick. And I'm gonna call it ZZZ, just for explanation purposes. Put it back on here. And now, basically in the rounds folder, we have this game called ZZZ, um, basically, right? And then last but not least, you go File, Save. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So, if you want to double check, uh, one other thing is under Properties, 
just make sure that you have all the same settings that I have right here. And this should work uh, pretty well for your uh, PS2. So if I exit, right, and if I go back to my ISO, right click, open an ultra ISO. Now, if I go back to game list to verify, go to view, we see that at the end it has updated or I kept my new game list, for example. And then if I go to the rounds folder, we see that at the very bottom, we had the ZZZ, right? So that's just very hypothetical. Like I, like I said, um, not all games will work fine. So if you want to go get your favorite ROMs and test them out, by all means do so. And the emulator does not work well with newer ROM files. So if you have like um, 3D games um, like Marvel vs. Capcom or something like along those lines, it's not going to work that well, unfortunately. But some of the more 2D, more basic games, those should work um, pretty good for the most part. So with that said, let's go straight to my PS2 and showcase this main emulator and how it works. Let's do this. All right, so here we are with my PS2, so let's do this. So let's go ahead, let's run Open PS2 Loader. I would think any version works, you know, 0.9.3 or higher. So as long as you got a version that can load CD images, you're good to go. So I have it set up to automatically load my USB thumb drive. So let's go ahead and load the ISO here. And I'll show you how this works. So basically once it has fully loaded after we get past this boot up screen, basically, um, there's gonna be a list of games on the right hand side. And we can use the D-pad up and down to navigate the list of games. So that'll make more sense once we get there in a second. To help with the game playing, you can also disable the sound. You can also disable like this uh, FM music, I, I believe it's the hardware acceleration or whatever it's called, which we'll see in a second here, once it shows on the main menu. So if you have a game you wanna test around, you can do that. Now I, I do realize that some of this text, it looks a little bit uh, scrambled a little bit. It's not solid text, but that's just the way it is. So if you wanna start the game, you press start. If you wanna do sound on or off, you press circle basically, so you see how that toggles that, right? And here it says, I think it's called like F, FW or FM. The, the text is sort of hard to see, but it says FM. Let's say it's FM, sound on, off. You can use the triangle. And uh, that's how that works. So if I were to pick a game that I know that works pretty well, as an example, I'm going to go to uh, Mario. So Mario, the sound is on. The FM emulation is on. So I'm going to press start. And then here you press uh, D-pad uh, left and right as your simulation for OK. And then press any key to continue forward. And here I'm gonna press um, R2 is to insert the coin. And press start. This is a little bit of, I can't skip this, but this is just this particular game. And then you just, um, after a while here, you can actually navigate the game using your D-pads. Uh, X and circle basically so that's how that works right if you want to exit the game you can press um, uh, L3 some games will allow you to go back to here and some will just freeze so let's do an example of a game that I know does not work 100% well and that's like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles so if I keep going down here it's a long list TMNT, let's press uh, start here, and then this particular game will load. Uh, this one, uh, you will notice that the sound will be, the music is sort of choppy, so to speak. I don't think it matters if you're gonna be SMB or internal hard drive for a fat PS2. It's just the way the emulator is. So, and it's probably because the way the PS2 architecture is as well. So if you're looking for a better MAME experience, I highly encourage you to go consider maybe other hardware solutions. Or maybe if RetroArch has a main emulator in the future, maybe that might be the answer to go, but time will tell. Okay, so here it is. I'm gonna press R2. And another caveat, um, this main emulator only allows for one player. So if you're thinking you could do two players, three players, four players, sorry, that, that's not gonna happen with this emulator. So here we can see the sound is a little bit um, messed up. And it's a little bit laggy here, right? So it really depends on the game. Uh, if you disable the sound, the music, it might be a little bit better, but maybe not, right? 
And to be honest, I probably may want to play this game as a Super Nintendo uh, emulator and ROM instead of trying to do the main solution. And here I try to press the L3 and the game froze, right? Um, there is no save states. And uh, if it freezes like this, basically just restart your PS2, go back to OPL, and then run your ISO and just select another game. So that's today's um, main tutorial. If you guys have any nitpicking questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.